little lion. Little piggy. <laughs> Good boy. Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday and I think I've been bitten in the night. I've got a really itchy spot on my leg. But I don't know how that happened because I was wearing pajama bottoms. I wasn't even wearing like shorts or anything. But it's Tuesday and I have not vlogged for two weeks. Can you believe that it was two weeks ago that I went to London and that was the last time that I actually picked up my vlogging camera other than like filming like some fashion videos. It's so weird, isn't it, to think all of that time has passed and I've not vlogged. <laughs> Today is a day that both Ali and I have been really looking forward to because we wanted to get our patio done before, like, well, not before summer, but like in time for summer. And so we ended up like latching it onto the end of phase one of the house renovation. And it's looking like today, for the most part, it's going to be finished off. We've got the LCI team coming at 11. We have finally our new Oxenwood sofas coming. There was like this big thing where we'd managed to order the wrong size in the sofas and now we've got the right size coming. And to be fair, Oxenwood were really, really helpful and just changed them over and we're really grateful for that. But it, I think it meant that it took a little bit longer, but it is gonna be so worth it because you would have seen if you follow me on Instagram, but we've got our new fire pit and um, that's arrived. And so it's just gonna give that area a bit of a facelift because we've not done anything to it. I think maybe next year we'll have it all like regrouted and stuff, but um, it's just getting a facelift this year just to give it a new lease of life and just make it a bit more of like an entertaining space because it's a really big patio, but it's just, it's a bit like, and we were finding that anything we put on it just looked like a pea on a drum because it's so big and everything was just so small. So yeah, fingers crossed that I'm gonna get to show you how that looks. The, the only thing that I know of that isn't coming today is our pots that our olive trees are going in. We've got a couple of olive trees that are gonna be put on the patio, which I'm really excited about. Our pots are delayed in Tuscany at the moment, so unfortunately they won't be coming. I also want to say if my neck is looking really patchy with my tan, it's not that I've done my tan badly. I had like a really bad skin flare up in my scalp and in my ears and on my neck. And when I did it, I um, had tanned. And so it's all clung to there. It's not the tan that I'm allergic to because I've used it since, but it just, it's all clung to it and it's like dry skin. So. Before you think I've fake tan badly, it's not, but I'm giving it lots of like nourishing. I'm putting the Kate Somerville Skin Saver on there and it's working really well. But anyway, I am going to basically get myself out and go for a run. I've been so good working out, it's unbelievable. Like I feel so much better for it. And um, last week I worked out seven times in a week. That doesn't mean seven days, basically like I, it counts, my, my watch counts like my walks and things like that. So when I go for like an hour walk, it counts it. So I worked out seven times last week. Very proud of myself. So I took yesterday off, but now I'm gonna get outside and I'm gonna head for maybe like a 5K run, get back, have a breakfast snack and get on with my day. But, oh, that is my alarm to say that it is seven o'clock and I should be out the door. So let's go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the sound of a deer. <laughs> Not the prettiest of sounds. Oh my gosh, you can still see the sweat on my face. <laughs> that was a really good run this morning, even though for the first three kilometers, I was cursing the fact that I was on a run. I was like, any minute now, this is gonna feel good and I'm gonna love it. <laughs> and then by the end I'm like, yes! <laughs> and of course, now for the main part of my morning routine. I realized that I needed to incentivize my runs a little bit more. I used to say to myself, like, if you run or work out the majority of this week, 
you can buy yourself some shoes at the end of the month. And I realized that that incentive was way too far off. I needed something that was like right after I ran. And so I decided that I was gonna start making my morning kind of breakfast smoothie as my reward, basically. I've been using Huel and I got, I first heard of this because I listened to Steve Bartlett's podcast and he uses this all the time and so that really interested me and they've just launched their 100 percent nutritionally complete protein and this is basically something that you can have as like a snack to introduce more protein for me it's really good because i absolutely hate breakfast and it's just not something i ever really have but i also understand the importance of my body getting nutrients after i work out so that it can feed my muscles and just give me energy because if there's one thing i've realized is once i've run i get really cold because my body is using so much of the energy and it needs something to refuel that so i've really really got into basically making a bit of a ritual out of my morning smoothie now this one like i said is 100 percent nutritionally complete and it's also pea hemp and faba protein so um this works really well with my stomach it doesn't irritate it at all it's 105 calories per serving it's got loads of vitamins and minerals in it as well so it is something that is gonna be hugely beneficial if you're someone that's quite active it's also it's like for me just really good to have because i sometimes when i'm I notice this when I'm like worried about something. If I've got like a job that I'm really worried about or just those things that you generally have in life that sometimes you just worry about, I completely lose my appetite. And so sometimes when I know that I'm gonna get lethargic, this is gonna affect me really badly, I will make myself have one of these because I know that it'll make me feel so much better. So if I'm like busy or on the go or rushing around, but mainly this is like my my answer to not having breakfast because whereas it is nutritionally complete, I can also add more stuff to it to just make it like more of a breakfast smoothie. So I can add cornflakes or oats or bananas or whatever to just make it more like filling and more of like a meal for me because I just don't ever usually have breakfast. So this is the chocolate fudge brownie one. It's my favorite. I'll link it in the description box down below. And now I'm gonna make my smoothie with you basically. Mr. Mill and Gordon and the family are harvesting spinach for his breakfast. <laughs> oh gosh, I always love to come out and have my smoothie on the terrace because I can look over the kitchen garden and just kind of observe. I had a really good evening yesterday because I had my first like proper harvest from the kitchen garden and I had courgettes and I had beans and I had carrots and we made dinner with it and it was just wonderful which again is like part of my kind of routine which I'm loving but I come out here with my morning breakfast smoothie and it just becomes a bit of a ritual that I look forward to and I only allow myself to do it if I've worked out and it just sets me up for the day and I just feel like I've put a load of goodness back into my body and also like I feel like I've got more energy as well which is lovely it also tastes wonderful and I know that especially for women like protein is one of those things that we kind of shy away from for me they make such a difference to the tone it's why I've always used them because feeding my muscles has always been like the biggest game changer in when I look my most toned. And even though for me now, like health and fitness is so different to what it used to be. Like it used to be all like looks and that was it. Now it's all about like, I only pretty much work out for how my mind feels, but I also would like to look nice and feel like strong and whatever. But it's just funny how your journey with fitness changes as you get older. <laughs> It's also, just to add on top of that, a really great source of fiber and protein, but it also has vitamin D as well, which as you can see, <laughs> the UK doesn't always get a lot of, but hopefully we are getting a heat wave soon. But I'm sitting out on the terrace 
taking it all in because it's gonna get a bit of a facelift soon so I'm gonna tell you more about that but I'll link everything about Huel in the description box down below it comes in six different flavors as well so let me know in the comments which one you are most likely to try or if you're already a fan of Huel what's your favorite flavor because I just kind of got on to the chocolate fudge one and stuck with it and so I need to be inspired or have you got any good recipes or anything like that I'd love to know anyway I'm gonna finish this off and get ready lovely way to start the day okay I've just about got my makeup finished for the day but I am going to sort my hair out because it got a little bit ruined in the night that is one thing that I've noticed since I've stopped straightening my hair FYI this is my hair unstraightened yesterday it was tonged with this little bad boy which is what I've been doing recently but um, my hair got quite kinked in the night. It definitely doesn't last the night as long. Sometimes it does, um, but I think I was a little bit hot in the night despite having the aircon on, which is just such a game changer. But I thought that I would show you quickly how I've been doing my hair, because I know that lots of people have been asking with how I've changed it up. I feel like getting my hair done has given me like a new sort of lease of life with my hair. I feel like I've fallen back in love with it again because it's at a length that I'm comfortable with, it's now a colour that I'm comfortable with, and it's starting to feel a bit healthy. Like we literally cut all of the like dead ends off and it just feels so much better. And I feel so much brighter as well. If you can hear lots of like reversing noises, it's because our olive trees, I believe, have just been delivered. So that's exciting. I'm gonna let these, these take a while to heat up. They're not as um, quick as everything else. And, when I have like waves like this, I sometimes just run it over with that. Honestly, my mornings at the moment are just the most positive experiences and I massively notice if I don't do it. Like that's what I was saying when I was talking about how like my focus of health and fitness has completely changed in that before it was all like, oh, I need to have like ripped abs. Although I'd still like ripped abs, FYI. But more than anything, it's about how I feel afterwards and the way that I feel after running in the morning is just like nothing I've experienced. But it's so funny, it's only afterwards. Like before I go for a run, I'm like, oh, for goodness sake, why do I have to do this? And even halfway through, I'm like, oh, why do I have to do this? And then afterwards I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. I'm also listening to the most phenomenal book. It's by Brianna Weiss. I don't think I've told you about it on here but Zana was like, you will love this book. And she was reading it and she was like, I'm turning over all of the pages, like making notes. And instantly I downloaded it on Audible and I listened to it and initially, this is like my little book review, but initially I was like, oh no, Brianna Weiss not reading it. And I definitely find that like, it's really important for like authors to read the books. However, I think that this one book might be, I mean, I don't know what Brianna Weiss sound, sounds like, but this might be an exception to the rule where she's like got away with not reading it because the lady that she has got to read it has a really like calming voice. And it's so weird. It's not like a normal book that I've ever really think to listen to because it's all very sort of listicle. It's, um, I think it's like, oh, oh, what is it called? Let me check. 101 Essays That Will Change The Way You Think. And it's by Brianna Weiss and it's read by Abby Craden. I'm on chapter 63. Um, there's 10 hours of listening and I've got just under four hours left of this particular book. Um, I think I'd probably go back to the beginning and listen to it all again because it's just like, it really is like that, that will just change the way you think, but also like make you think differently as well. And just daily reminders, almost like affirmations as well. So I put it on when I'm running and Abby, what's her name? Craydon has a really like calming voice. And I'll never forget my brother once said to me that he really liked getting up in the morning and working out with um, an angry man shouting at him in his headphones. So like really like motivational speakers, like shouting at him in his ears. And whilst I'm not quite as savage as that, I do love the idea of um, like positivity just being like fed into my brain whilst I'm running. And this book is just all of those things, like really important reminders, thought processes, like words to live by and things like that. And it's just, it's just brilliant. It's such a great book in terms of like 
making you think differently basically and so I would 110% suggest it when I'm on my like runs in the morning or even when I'm just on my walks with Porter it's one of those books that I'm like it's you could just listen to it over and over again and never get bored because you'd probably always take different nuggets of information from it but anyway that is that and um, now I'm going to finish off my hair so basically this is just what I do I just I, I used to do my hair all in different directions and now I do it all in the same direction and actually get a better finish I don't know if there is a bigger wand than this GHD curve I don't know what this one is it was just I just found it in my drawer and I was like I'm gonna try it and it has absolutely changed the game like I literally don't straighten my hair anymore and it's I do definitely feel like I'm noticing a difference even though these are very hot like I'm not doing the same amount of like over and over straightening instead it's more of like a blast dry I don't even go to like the roots of my hair and it just works really well and honestly I don't think I've ever had so many compliments on my hair and I definitely don't think it takes any more or like less time than the way that I was doing before if anything it's like slightly less but I'm trying to like get quicker at it because it is a bit of a technique change. So it does take a little bit of getting used to. And like obviously some bits of hair you've got to do differently because especially around the front of my face, like the front of my face is where I've got most of like the broken bits of my hair. So it takes like all of this, it takes me ages to like get all of these little bits. But once I get those, um, all of the shape of the hair and I just basically do it all and then brush it through instantly and it works so nicely now obviously my hair is quite long now as well so sometimes I have to do sort of like halfway and then do a little bit more up just so that I don't get like a mushroom head because if you just do the curls at the bottom you can get a little bit of a mushroom and I'm just not partial to a mushroom head you might be partial to a mushroom head I'm not <laughs> So that is, this is what it looks like when it's finished. Very ringlety and not really the vibe. So then I take this brush, this is a wet brush, but this is like their wide tooth one covered in all my hair, which I'm gonna get rid of. Um, and I just use this to brush through and brushing it through instantly loosens everything, but also gives it more of a natural kind of look and it will drop as I do the other side as well so we'll just leave that to do its thing and start on the other side now the other side is the hardest because I'm very like cat handed with it so I think it takes me a little bit longer but we persevere because it looks so good And voila, I'm just brushing through again, just to brush out all of the curls. If I feel like it needs a bit of serum to just make it drop a little bit more, I will pop some of the Olaplex number seven bonding oil because pretty much that's what I'm using in terms of treatments on my hair at the moment because it seems to be working, but don't think I need any today. And then I'll just zhuzh it around and the more I zhuzh my hair the better the waves get the more they loosen up and just look like beautifully tousled hair so I can just leave it like this and it'll just drop a little bit but that's it basically you've kind of watched me do it this does get really hot and I've had a fair amount of wounds from this tool um I would like one that like adjusts like you can adjust the heat because I don't think it needs to be as hot as it is but I mean it makes it quick but now I'm going to get myself dressed because I think they are going to be here soon to start dressing the uh, terrace, which I'm excited about. I've popped on my Max Mara trousers and a little bandeau top because it's looking like the heat wave is coming a little bit sooner and it's quite warm today. So we're actually scheduled for it to be later on this week, but I think we're getting it a little bit earlier. So um, trousers, because I didn't shave my legs, and uh, a top, because I did shave my underarms. <laughs> yeah, I've popped little turn-ups on these trousers, which probably looks very dated, but I wanted to wear it with my flats. So that is what I'm doing. We desperately need to deadhead this rose bush because it was looking phenomenal, and now it's not looking quite so phenomenal. <gasps> the olive trees have arrived. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna cut them so that they are 
ready and getting fluffed but these are all going to be positioned around the terrace aren't they porty poo you coming to investigate too you love eating the little olive leaves don't you it's your favorite thing okay so porter is strapped in can you see him there he is so porter has a little makeshift sick bucket that attaches to the front of his seat he hasn't been sick for a very very long time but we installed that once and we're very grateful that we did that because sometimes he gets sick to be honest it's only ever happened on one particular journey that we we do and we've just found a different route on that journey so hopefully it works i am now taking porter for his adolescence check which I think is really lovely and I'm actually really glad that we're going because there are a couple of things I want to do. A, I want them to potentially clip his toenails and B, I want to talk to them about his food because I have a little bit of like a, a food complex because of that time when Lumi stopped eating and um, she started like losing so much weight when she had pancreatitis, pancreatitis. I'm now really like, paranoid about food with the the cats and the the animals and porter i really hoped that we would get him into a really good routine with his like food and it's just it's been impossible because sometimes he just won't eat anything and other times he wants like an entire packet of food and it's just really hard to know when to give him food because obviously i want to i want to give him food and i want it to be fresh for him to eat and nice for him to eat he rarely eats anything as soon as i put it down he's asleep i bored him to death and obviously when it's hot insects get onto the food as well so i have to be really conscious of that i just want a little bit of like help not help maybe advice because i'm buying all of this food for him and it's like the top food <laughs> that he could possibly be on and i've got to buy two different types of food as well because sometimes he just won't eat one one of them and then he won't eat the other one and then he won't he's like he's quite fussy and that's like notorious with dachshunds so i just want to make sure that a like he's not hungry because i don't think i would ever forgive myself and b like is this normal is there something i can do like it's so weird because sometimes like i can barely ever get him to eat and then yesterday of course the one time when i don't have any food defrosted for him it just happened that that wasn't the case he was licking his bowl like mom i'm hungry and i'm like oh okay <laughs> so i quickly defrosted some food and gave it to him and he ate the whole packet which was amazing but yeah so i just want to talk to them and just make sure that everything's okay and obviously pick up his like worming and stuff like that so just just an overall health check but he's just such a happy boy that i'm sure he's gonna be fine it's just gonna be for my peace of mind probably more than anything so we're heading over there now even though i have bored him to actual death like he's <laughs> his little head in his sick bowl <laughs> on another note i've been banned from the garden so i'm not allowed out onto the terrace whilst the girls are installing so i'm basically not looking i've seen some of it and it's looking really really lovely i'm waiting till the end to just be like totally like on board so hopefully they said that by the time i'm back it should be finished so we shall wait and see with regards to that so it's really good i'm just glad that we're going to have sofas and the whole terrace is going to be installed because from tomorrow i'm pretty sure it's from tomorrow we've got this heat wave i thought it was coming early but it's kind of clouded over now but it was getting really warm anyway i'm going to stop being exceptionally british and talking to you about the weather and i'm going to head to the vets now so he's just gone in and i've obviously explained to him i was like so basically i'm just like i'm just worried that he's like not getting enough food or that he's like not hungry for any reason and i like explained to her that i have like two different foods for him and she was like oh no <laughs> you are making a rod for your own back there i was like oh no and she said yeah so he's just gonna get used to not eating like eating whatever he wants when he fancies it and i was like oh right so he's just getting me wrapped around his little finger and she was like pretty much yeah you kind of have to decide now what food you're going to put him on i think a good thing is, is that he's eating the raw food and i would rather him eat the raw diet so 
I think that I'll make a decision, an executive decision and put him onto the raw and then that's just it. The only thing with the raw is that it's like, it goes like over very quickly, Ugh. but it's good for him and that's all that matters. But yeah, and th then I was also like, does his nails need trimming? And they were like, no, they look absolutely fine. So, cause he generally walks on road, like if I'm taking him out of my house, he has to go on the road a little bit. So I think that's wearing down his claws enough anyway, but I just wanted to get them checked. And yeah, hopefully everything's okay. So, Porty's weight is absolutely fine. I was just being a worry guts. His nails are fine. Everything's fine. He's been giving, given his uh, worming tablets, I think they are, which will give him probably this evening. But everything's good. Not doing a bad job, are we, Porty? Well done us. He's falling asleep again. <laughs> so I'm literally just heading home and straight to hopefully check out the finished terrace. Well, I think I look like exactly what I've just been doing, if that makes any sense. Sometimes I come on here and I say something to you and I think, I can't be bothered to say it again. And then I watch it back later on and I'm like, why didn't you just say it again, Lydia? Because that makes no sense whatsoever. But... What I was trying to get at was, I look like I've just been sat on the sofa snoozing because I have just been sat on the sofa snoozing. Okay, that was what I was getting at, but whatever. My sofa, I mean, is in the garden. So the girls have left from um, LCI and I have, <sighs> I've been making the most because the sun is kind of in and out at the moment. Okay, it's not completely out, but it's, it's out sometimes. So I feel like the sun has come out for our terrace reveal today. And I am just, I'm, I'm obsessed. It is just, it just looks so much better and more substantial. And I don't know whether it comes across on camera. Let me know in the comments if it does, but it's a really big space, but I, I think it's really hard to like know what to put in some places to fill it, but not make it feel cluttered. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling and I'm gonna show you. Ignore my dining room table because I'm yet to dress that because we just uh, washed the runner on it. As you can see out the doors, we have sofas and a fire pit. Now it will look like it's slightly on the wonk, but that's because our bifolds are this size, so they have a thicker area and this door bends back. So if that door was like straight, it'd be like that, but they're not off center. They are perfectly central to the window. We went for two of the two-seater Falco sofas from Oxenwood. Uh, we were gonna go for three-seaters, but their three-seaters are three meters long. So I think with this little side table here, they would have come out probably to about this line here. And then the table, I just think it was a bit much. I love that the girls have made use of my potted mint and herbs all around the garden. Um, the cushions I am absolutely in love with. I think this is my favorite. Oh, I don't know. It's one of my favorites because I love stripes, evidently. Linen stripes are my jam. They're really nice and big and fluffy. This one is a sagey, taupey, floral, Ujimi flip. I think these are all from Perennials. Um, if that even is the brand name, don't quote me on that, but they said Perennials, so yeah, whatever. Um, so we've got three cushions this side and three cushions that side. And then we have our dining area. Now, obviously our pots, ha they're stuck in Tuscany at the moment. I'm sorry, but is that not just the bougiest thing I've ever said? My pots are stuck in Tuscany. <laughs> Anyway, I didn't choose pots from Tuscany. Okay, Lauren chose the pots from Tuscany. Lauren is the bougie one in this. But yeah, so these are just their like temporary pots. I believe that our terracotta Tuscan pots are much, much bigger than this. So these will be raised up and much bigger. So these will take up a lot more space. So please just ignore the fact that they're they're black and plastic. I actually have some like, what's it called? It's that Rust-Oleum stone spray paint stuff that I think should I just spray paint them? Because we don't know when the, the pots are coming. Anyway, that's just, I mean, it's just a bit extra, isn't it? I can just leave them like this. It doesn't really bother me too much. I just really wanted to see them in place. Then we have the dining table and I was obviously along the right path on this because I already had some herbs on here, but we've got some lavender, we've got some rosemary. Um, I don't actually know what this is. Is it a type of mint? Oh no, I think it's a type of basil. Very different basil to what I've ever had before. And basil doesn't usually do well outside like this, but 
I have plenty of herbs for it to change over to. Then we've used some of my current crockery, which is from Sophia Ceramics. We've got new placemats, which I love, and new linens. These are from Neptune, and these are kind of like terracotta colour. Aged terracotta pots, wooden lanterns, lanterns, an assortment of kind of like wooden lanterns and, and candlesticks. And then we've got little, I think these are little like olive branches in the bowls which I think is very very cute we've got our glasses and then the table runner is also from Neptune as well now we've got the grey cushions from Oxenwood and I think eventually we will recover these but because they're brand new we're just not going to do that yet because it'd just be ridiculous to and actually you can't ever see them like in situ with the other furniture if that makes sense we've got more potted ujimi flips here we've got some more lavender i think this is um english lavender it might be provence lavender i'm not sure some little mint which we love in pots obviously our gorgeous fire pit and then over here this is still slightly a work in progress and also by the way <laughs> I'm sorry, that is not a dead dog. That is a sunbathing dog. A dog that just loves the heat. And as soon as the sun comes out, he's like, yes. We are also missing our parasol. So I think our parasol will be in that corner. We have one that is on kind of like an arched arm that will go over the table, but um, it has arrived, but it's, it's not got the base yet. So things that we're still pending. See, I told you, he is alive. Okay, so the things that we're pending are the pots and the parasol. These are our sun loungers from Ochre, and we've had these recovered in a perennial striped taupe, beautiful kind of like linen finish, which looks really, really lovely. We've got my old potted herbs here, which is a little bit of mint and a little bit of rosemary on the side table, but I got these from Ochre, and I'm so glad that we were able to like use these. In fact, we were able to really kind of match the the wicker this is actually a faux wicker i didn't realize that but it's the same as the oxenwood i went for the faux wicker chairs from oxenwood because i just didn't want to run the risk of getting real wicker outside so we went for the faux wicker and they match perfectly so we've got the ochre sun loungers two of those side table and then round here past the sunbathing pooch we have our very very large i can't remember the name of this company i follow them on instagram but this is like the largest cushion storage i think i have ever seen you can't see this from outside i'm going to go check in our bedroom though because i really don't want it to be visible from our bedroom window but this is where we're going to store all of the cushions they used to be stored in our shed and it was a ball lake and now that we have like a million more cushions not over exaggerating at all it just wasn't feasible to be running forwards and backwards from the shed so we wanted to get some storage that was a real kind of like um, essential thing for us this is obviously our light well and it's currently protected by a grate because we removed the really high railings we are going to be ha having some glass fitted to this eventually just to make it safe more than anything um, because Lumi likes to walk across this windowsill and has fallen down here many a time she's fine most cats land on their feet so that's not not a problem but doggies aren't quite so clever so we've got them cornered off basically but this will look a lot better when we get it done so it's not completely finished and i definitely think that next year i'm gonna have the whole patio repointed and uh re-grouted because i think that that will really set off the patio nicely like the the sandstone because it doesn't need a new patio it probably wasn't laid very well in the first place but it would just be such a waste to replace this when we can just repoint it it works so well with the house and the view over the kitchen garden is just perfection now we've also got festoon lighting i thought that the festoon lighting was going to be like a kind of trellis over the top so i'm gonna wait to see what ali says i the thing about festoon lighting is i love it at night but i hate it during the day <laughs> because it's black and I feel like why would they just not make them green just so that it's a little bit more sympathetic I have no idea anyway so I'm gonna see what Ali thinks of this because I think Ali likes festoon lighting more than I do I said yes to this because I, I don't know I just think it's gonna make it look really really lovely but we're gonna test it out at night I'll show you later but obviously it's not quite finished yet but I really feel like this garden is just coming together like look at these flower beds as well all of that kind of vision that started a few months ago is starting to come together. Like when you stand back, oh my gosh, we need to get this wide shot. Oh, it looks so much better. It actually looks like a home. I tell you what, that's the hardest thing with this house is just filling it. Like everything is just, hello, dinghy. 
And just filling this patio has cost a fortune, but it's so worth it to see it just look like such a wonderful entertaining space. I love it. Anyway, I had to change my battery, but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you like festoon lighting? I'm on the fence, like I love it when I go to a restaurant and I'm like, ah, oh, the atmosphere when it's like dusk. Um, it makes me think that I'm like on holiday, but I, I just, during the day when you actually live in the place, I don't know. But this one is really good because this one is solar powered. I think I found one similar on the internet, so I'll link it in the, dis in the description box down below. But I also just love that we've got this beautiful dining area now that looks out over the kitchen garden. Like, look at this view. Oh my gosh. So much time and love has gone into this. And to see it now like this is just wonderful. And it just fits perfectly, like all of these pots. Like the name of, of our house is all about basically like a kitchen garden. And so we really wanted to bring the, the identity of where we live to the home because I, felt, I feel like it didn't have that before. And I feel like we've achieved this. Just seeing this view here, I feel like I've achieved it. And that's such, oh such a sense of achievement that I've created the home that I dreamed of is just so wonderful. Sorry, I know I'm gushing and it's not always easy to hear somebody else gush about their own home, especially if maybe you're not having a good time with your home or whatever, but you know when you just wait a really long time for something and then it finally happens and you're just like, oh, great. And now I can come out here. I think this is gonna be probably my most used spot in the summer because I can just lounge and it's cushions and it's comfortable and I can keep an eye on my little poo poo over there look at him snuffling in the grass he's just an angel and you're starting to see the the froth that I told you about we wanted these hydrangea annabelles to be frothy they'll probably look their best next year but they're doing really well they really are so we've got the guys from Nicholson's coming in a few weeks when we do have well they actually start on Friday when they do our steps in the woodland but these pots are going to be potted by them so our new Tuscan pots are going to be put in and fitted by them because they know everything that they need basically so it's going to look really lovely now all we need is a swimming pool right there <laughs> I'm joking I'm actually not joking I would love a swimming pool I just can't stop looking at this area I'm thinking of all of the glasses of rosé that I am going to drink sat on that sofa there oh and all of the cups of coffee in the morning that I'm going to do over summer as well I just think all of the books that are going to be read and the fires and the memories that we're going to make around that fire I'm just so excited ciao porcini what are you doing? Were you Uncle Dick in the car earlier? Yes, you were. I actually think I forgot to tell you, but I um, got to my front gate and was trying to get the gates to open without my fob, so I was trying to do it from my phone. And um, I thought when I was leaving, I was like, we're only going to the vets. He's not gonna get sick in the car. Like he hasn't been sick in the car for ages. He's fine. So I was gonna remove his makeshift bucket and I thought, I'll just take it off. And I didn't, I left it because I obviously thought better of it or whatever I thought. And we pull up at the gates and I'd noticed that he'd, he'd been licking his lips a lot. He was like, and like, that usually means he's gonna be sick. I was trying to get the gates open and then I could hear him like, ooh, ooh. so I grabbed the bucket and like held it up and he was unfortunately sick into the bucket. But I think it was because he'd eaten a bone or something like, he, not from me, we don't give him bones. We give him bully sticks, which I think someone thought might have been a poo on my rug, but it was definitely, it was definitely a bully stick um, and he chews on them. But I think he might have like maybe swallowed that hole and then it came back up maybe, who knows? I don't know. Thank goodness for the sick bucket. That's all I can say. But he's always fine afterwards. Oh, actually that reminds me, I've also had a package come from Cook and Butler. And Cook and Butler is where I get my, I got my cloches from. They have a stall in the old flight house and they just released their collection of uh, like brushes. And you know, I have a bit of a thing about wooden brushes, like kitchen brushes, utility brushes, that kind of thing. And they just released their collection. So I thought, I love this. 
Cook and Butler, don't judge a box by its cover. We proudly ship using reused and recycled packaging. This may not be the prettiest parcel, but it helps save trees we love. I thought that's so cute. However, I wasn't expecting this parcel to be so big when it only contains brushes, but I'm guessing that they've done some big brushes too. Oh wow, there are some big brushes in here. Okay, we have a cobweb broom. That is going to be game changing. So I'm guessing you use this. Oh my gosh, I almost want to get like somewhere for these to be hung so that they're on show. Cause you know when brushes are just so beautiful. And I love that they've got the branding on them as well. They say Cook and Butler on there as well. But I think especially in utility rooms, Having like the brushes hung on the wall always looks so vintage vibes, if that makes sense. This one is the hand dust brush. Ooh. So this is for obviously like scooping dust. Oh, that feels nice. Again, Cook and Butler branded. We have the keyboard desk brush. That's gonna be very, very useful for Mr. Mill and Gordon and my office. But again, they've all got little hooks on them. Love it. Oh, wow. Branded Cook and Butler broom, but a soft broom. Oh, I love it. This can be, this honestly is one of those brooms that you can like just leave stood in the corner of your, your kitchen or your utility room or your boot area. And it just looks so nice. I think that's everything. So I'll link all of the brushes in the description box down below, but I've got a real thing for beautiful brushes. Again, like I've got a thing for um, tea towels. One of those weird things. Do you have a weird thing? <laughs> like a weird thing that you like, and like if you see a nice one, you can't not buy it. I know that there's gonna be some bougie person in the comments that's like, if I see a nice car, I can't not buy it. I'd be like, yes. <laughs> We are just back from a dog walk and the sun is setting over the greenhouse and it just looks fabulous. We've popped pizzas on in the oven, Ali's just got home, Porty's just had some water, Lumi's just had some food. Here she is, hello Angel, hello, she's been snoozing in my dressing room. I'm gonna have a look at what the festoon lighting looks like when it comes on, but I had an idea as well. I think when these pots are potted, I'm gonna get some of the solar powered lights to sit in the pots so that they light up the olive trees at night as well. I think that'd be really effective. Like two or three, I think will just be enough in each pot as well. Lumi's inspecting the new goods. I'm sure she'll give it the seal of approval. We are just curling up in bed to watch TV. And Ali has told me that the festoon lights are on in the garden, so we're gonna go outside and have a look and see what we think. Ooh, see, I love festoon lighting at night. It looks really nice at night, and then the only thing I think is that that pole there needs to be like, not there, but it does look cute. Do, but do you know what? You could get the same effect and have the festoon lights in the trees and then you wouldn't see them so badly. I think you could get the same lovely effect once these are raised up in their Tuscan pots with the festoon lighting in those. I think that would still give that, that cosy yes. vibe. Yeah. Hello, are you saying hello to everyone? Oh, my beautiful firstborn child. Mummy loves you so much. This is the first morning that I'm getting to sit out there and have my morning coffee. <sighs> this is too exciting and the weather is glorious. Oh. Well, the heat wave is definitely here and I am loving it, but I'm gonna stop gushing about my patio furniture and the terrace. I'm just, I'm literally, I'm just, I can't stop looking at it. So I'm gonna stop and we are gonna see you guys in the next video, aren't we? Because I think we've, 
we've talked about this enough now, haven't we? Say bye, Porty. Oh, <laughs> having a clean, are we? Anyway, um, yeah, no, I thought that I would leave this vlog here and uh, see you in my next one.